This video is a review for the word problem quiz. A customer went to a garden shop and bought some potting soil for $11 and four shrubs. The total bill was $48. Find the price of each shrub. So like we said before, the question usually uh, has the variable in it. So we'll call P equals the shrub. I use that because the S looks too much like a five. Okay, they bought $11 worth of potting soil plus four shrubs. It's going to equal their total of $48. So you're going to use the Finney 5 for this. I've defined my variable. I have my setup. Now we need to solve. We're going to take this and solve it. And we're going to subtract 11 from each side. And divide by 4. get 9.25. So P equals 9.25. Okay, now we need to check it. Is 11 plus 4 times 9.25 equal to $48? Well, 4 times 9.25 over here we know is 37. So it was 11 plus 37 equal to 48. And that checks out. So the last step of the Finney 5, okay, so we have our check, we've solved it, and now we need to answer the question. The question was, how much, what is the price of each shrub? So we can write in a complete sentence, the price of each shrub is and let's label it nine dollars and twenty five cents. Okay, let's look at the next question here. Stephen wants to buy a five hundred and eighty five dollar bicycle. Stephen has no money saved, but he will be able to deposit thirty dollars into a savings account when he receives his paycheck each Friday. However, before Stephen can buy the bike, he must give his sister $700 or $75 that he owes her. For how many weeks will Stephen need to deposit money into the savings account before he can pay back his sister? So we're going to use W as weeks. And we're going to set up. Now, we know that he's going to do $30 a week. However, he needs to pay back his sister first the $75, then this has to add up to $585. Well, what's left over? Well, it's minus $75. Okay, so we have our, we have our defined our variables. We set up, now we need to solve. So we're going to add 75 to both sides, and this makes sense because he needs to, over the weeks, he needs to earn more than the bike, $75 more than the bike because he has to pay his sister back. Okay, and then we're going to divide by 3. And again, you should be able to do long division, and hopefully I can do it too. Oh, and I see I've made a mistake because 220 weeks is a little bit too long. 
So I got 220 for an answer, and I'm like, oh, that's a little bit too long. But if I look back at my work here, I didn't bring down the 30 here. So this should be 30. Okay, and this 30 here makes this, instead of 220, this makes this to be 22. So let's just erase that. So again, that's another reason for a check. Good example of why we need to check our work here. So 30 goes into 660. I'm going to go 2 there. And then 2. So we have 22 weeks. Okay, now does that make sense? 30 times 22 weeks minus 75, is that going to equal enough for the bike? And we know 30 times 22 is 660, minus 75 is 585, so this checks out. Okay, and then we answer the question. Um, the question says, uh, in the question says, how many total weeks, how many total weeks is it going to take to buy the bike and pay back a sister? So, he will need 30 weeks, oops, sorry, made a mistake again, he will need 22 weeks, we got to answer the question to buy the bike and pay back his sister. Now you should be able to do these questions on your own without looking at the video. So you can watch the video and then do the questions on your own without looking. That's a good way to study. Okay, the next question. John is John and two friends are going out for pizza. Uh, for lunch, they split one pizza and three large drinks. The pizza costs twelve fifty. After using an eight dollar gift certificate, they spend nine thirty. Find the cost of one large drink. So we need to know what a drink cost. Okay, well, he has three there's there's three people total. John and the two friends is three total drinks. So we're going to do 3D. We also buy a pizza for 1250. They use an $8 gift certificate, so that's minus $8. And that total is going to be $9.30. Now, yes, we know we can do this in our head, but we have to show how to do it with an equation. So let's solve this. 3D. I'm going to go ahead and add the $12.50 and the $8 to get $20.50. equals 930 And now I have to solve this, minus $20.50 from both sides. Because what you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. Now, we need to know the difference between these two. And I've made a mistake. <laughs> Oops. There we go again. I made a mistake in my addition. So I looked at my work. It didn't make sense. So let's do it again. 3D plus 1250 minus 8 is 450. Again, my work was not making sense, so I stopped and redid it. Don't just keep going blindly. So I'm going to minus 450 from both sides because 1250 minus 8 is 450. I can't talk and add at the same time. Okay, so we're going to over here, we're going to get... Or 80 it looks like. That looks like it's making sense. Let me just double check. 0, that's 8. Okay, so now I'm going to divide by 3. And again, if you're not sure how, I can't divide that in your head, write it down. And division. 3 goes into 4 once, and then you multiply. 3, and then you subtract. 1, bring down the 8. The decimal point goes here. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 
times 3 is 18. You get a 0. We just finish out with zeros because it's money. So the cost of the drink, D, should be $1.60. Well, let's see if that works out. Is 3 times $1.60 plus 12.50 equal to 9.30. Okay, so, oops, forgot the $8. Minus $8 equal to 9.30. Thirty. We know three times one sixty is going to be four eighty plus twelve fifty minus eight. Is that going to equal nine thirty? Well, let's see. This is going to be sixteen seventeen thirty. Uh, hold on, make a mistake, I think. No, no mistake. No mistake, sorry. Can't talk and add at the same time. So I, I did my work over here and it checks out. Okay, so uh, each drink costs, label your answer, $1.60. That I don't box it on my other one. All right, moving on to the next one. School guidelines require there must be at least two chaperones for every 25 students going on a school trip. How many chaperones must there be for 61 students? Okay, so um, we need to know the chaperones. How many chaperones? There's a couple ways to do this question. Um, I kind of work backwards here. This is a little bit difficult question because it's only a couple steps. So we could set it up this way. We could say for every 25 students, there's two chaperones, which would equate to for every 12.5 students, there'd be a chaperone. Okay. Um, Let's see how this works here. Let's do the 25 2. So 61 students would equal 25 per chaperone. Now this one's a little bit harder to set up because it doesn't make sense the way we're setting up because we can't have half a student. So if we solve this, Basically, we want to know how many times 61 or 25 going to 61, and then we want to multiply that answer by 2. So we do the math 25 into 61 should be 2 and a little change. So 50, 11. So we got 2.45. So 2.45 equals a half of C. We multiply that, we get 2 times 2.5 is 4. So we get 4.9 equals C. So we would need, well, this is, this is a difficult one to check. Well, it's not too difficult. Um, well, let's say, let's just interpret our answer here. C should be 5. Okay, so if we go back to the original question and check it, uh, at least two chaperones for every 25 students. So 2 times 5, that's how many chaperones we're going to use. times 25, is that going to equal 61? I'm sorry, so I need, probably need to divide here. 2 times 5, no, sorry, that's a, let's do it this way. Sorry, let's do it this way. 
and thinking at the same time. Okay, so let's check this answer. Uh, C equals 5. So if I have 5 chaperones, that means I have 5 times 25, 2 chaperones for every 25 students. No, that's not right either. All right. Uh, I think I got it now. <laughs> 5 divided by 2 would be 2.5, which you can't have a half a chaperone. But times that by 25, that's going to be 50, 62. Okay, so that's going to be enough chaperone. All right, let's try it this way. Sorry. If I have five, if I have four chaperones, four chaperones will give me will equate to 50 kids. One chaperone will equate to let's say 12 kids because we can't have half a kid. If we add that together, we get 62, which is greater than 61, which checks out. Okay, so I got that. Um, there's probably a different way to check it, but that's what we got here. Sorry for the stumbling on this one. Um, okay, so how many chaperones must there be for 61 students? There must be uh, five chaperones for 61 students. Okay, apologize for the mistakes on that one. Um, so, that was a tough one. I mean, tough because it's hard to, sh you can figure it out in your head, but it's hard to set up as a, al with algebra. All right, let's look at number five. The length of a rectangle is two centimeters less than twice the width. The perimeter of the rectangle is 38. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? So the length is two centimeters less than the width. It would be the width minus two centimeters. Um, so L equals the length. W equals the width. Um, and the perimeter rectangle is 38. So we have to be careful with this because we want one variable. So if L equals W minus 2, 2 centimeters less than the width, Oh, twice the width, sorry. Two centimeters less than twice the width. Well, let me start, or let me uh, erase that. So L equals length, W equals width. The length of the rectangle, L, L is two centimeters less than twice the width. Twice the width minus two. Okay, so L equals twice the width minus two. The perimeter which would be all the way around the outside of the rectangle. Drawing a picture of this is a good idea. So instead of, well, we're going to put L equals 2, W minus 2. This would be W. This would be another L, 2, W minus 2. And this would be W. So we want the perimeter all the way around the outside to be 38. So our setup for this one is going to be, and there's different ways to set it up. Let's just piece it together. The length plus a width, plus the other length, oops, the other length plus the width is going to equal 38. Now this looks a little scary, but we're just combining like terms here. So how many W's here are here? 2, 4, 6 W minus, now we're at how many, negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4 equals 38. And then we can Add 4 to both sides, get 6w equals 42, w equals 7. If w is 7, then l, which is 2w minus 2, would be 2 times 7 minus 2. 2 times 7 is 14, minus 2 is 12. So the check, let's see if it checks, is 7 plus 7 plus 12 plus 12 equal to 38. 24 and 14 is 38 and that checks out. So the question says what are the dimensions and dimensions are the length and the width. The 
length is, well, let's go back and look what the length is, 12, and let's see what units we're in, centimeters, and the width is, the width is 7 centimeters. Okay, so that's our answer. Now, and then the last, the last one, no, two more. Okay, the sum of two consecutive integers is negative 45. Write an equation that models the situation, find the values of the two integers. Well, we had to know what two consecutive integers are. Well, one and two are two consecutive integers. 50 and 51 are also two consecutive integers. Um, 75 and 76 are two consecutive integers. And you want to add them up, and they have to equal negative 45. Well, if it equals a negative 45 and they're two consecutive integers, our numbers are going to be negative. So let's say n is the first integer. So if I want to, in all these situations, I went from 1 to 2, 50 to 51, 70 to 76. I'm adding 1 to get my second number, my second integer. So that's your setup. Or, I'm sorry, that's your, uh, that's your defining your var variables. So those are my two variable, or my one variable used twice. So I need these two to add up to negative 45. So I just do what it says n, the first number, plus the second number, has to equal negative 45. Okay, well now I need to solve this. These two n's here make 2n plus 1 equals negative 45. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get 2n equals negative 46. Divide by 2. 2 into 46. You should be able to see this. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 6, 3. So 23, but I'm dealing with a negative. So n equals negative 23. Now add 1 to negative 23. Now be careful. Negative 23 plus 1 equals negative 22. So my numbers should be negative 23 and negative 22. They are consecutive. Okay, do they, but do they add up to negative 45? And the answer is yes, they do. And it checks. So let me just write the two numbers are and I can put them in order, negative 22 and negative 23. There's other ways to do this question, but uh, I find this is the uh, quickest way to do this one. So the numbers are negative 22 and negative 23. Moving on to the last one. The length of a rectangle is 8 more than 3 times the width. The perimeter of a rectangle is 64. So this is, a, again, like the last question. L equals length. W equals width. Um, the length is 8 centimeters more, so the length is 8 centimeters more than 3 times the width. Okay, so we're going to use that to find the perimeter, but again, the perimeter is adding up all around the outside. So I'm just going to use W, and instead of putting L, I'm going to put 8 plus 3W. And if I add up all the way around the outside, oops, If I add up all around the outside, oops, that's got to equal 64. So let's add 8 plus 3w plus w plus 8 plus 3w plus w equals 64. And again, you can do this math in your head. 3 plus 3 is 6, 7 and 8 w's, and then 8 and 8 is 16. And that is to equal 64. Subtract 16 from both sides.
8w equals 48 divided by 8w equals 6. Okay, so if w is 6, if w is 6, then 8 plus 3w would be 8 plus 3 times 6, which would be 8 plus 18, which would be 26. And that equals L. So this is L right here. I have to divide by L. This is L. 3w, 8 plus 3w. So, um, well, let's see if it works out. Does it check? Is 6... Is 6 plus 26 plus 6 plus 26, does that equal 64? Well, this is uh, 32, this is 32, and that checks out to be 64. Okay, so uh, again, a complete sentence, the dimensions, uh, what is there? Yeah, what are the dimensions? The width is uh, 6, and we're talking through about centimeters, and the length. This one is a bonus question. Area of the rectangle, show your work. Uh, area of a rectangle is length times width. So in this case, it would be 6 times 20. Uh, well, let me do it properly. It would be width. The length is 26. The width is 6. 6 times 26. 156. Now be careful here, 156 centimeters squared, because we're multiplying centimeters times centimeters to get centimeters squared. Okay, so you should be studying this. You should know the Finney 5 uh, for the quiz. You should know the steps of the Finney 5, which are define the variable. Uh, we have a setup. I missed the space here. Setup is here. We solved it. We checked it. And we answered it. And you have to do this for each of the word problems on a quiz. So please study them and know them. Thank you and God bless you.